Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to Upcycle by Little Toe where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. I have the easiest DIY for you today. Valentine's Day is coming up, so I'm gonna show you how I turned this sweater into this Valentine's Day inspired look. This DIY is so easy, there's even a no sew option, so let's get right to the tutorial. I'm super excited about this tutorial because I think it's gonna be really simple. You really only need three things. You're gonna need a oversized sweater, any sort of fabric that's red, and some heat and bond. I was at the thrift store recently and I came across this sweater and I love everything about it. I love the color, I love the texture, I love the material. Um, it's made out of 100% cotton chenille and it is so soft and comfy and it was only $2. But then I noticed that there were a bunch of these tiny holes all over the sweater so I decided to put it down. But then as I made my way around the thrift store, I came across this velvet dress and you guys know how much I love velvet. And I thought it'd be really cute to make little heart patches to cover those holes. Let's take a quick look at everything I'm upcycling today, starting off with the sweater. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought it for $2 and it's made out of 100% cotton chenille. It's so cozy and perfectly oversized. Since I wanted a whole Valentine's outfit, I'll also be giving this skirt a tiny makeover. I thrifted this for $1, but as you can tell, it's slightly big on me around the waist and it's also a little long on me, but overall pretty cute. And of course, here is the red velvet dress that I'll be using to make the hearts. It was only $1 and I'm only going to use this drapey part in the back, so I'll be able to save this dress for another upcycle project. To keep this tutorial simple, I'm going to be attaching the hearts to the sweater with some heat and bond. I've used this kind in past projects and it's a little stiffer and you're not supposed to sew it, but then I found this version which is stretchable and sewable and I just wanted the sweater to still have a drape after I've attached all the patches, so I've decided to go ahead and use this version. Then I just Google searched some images of hearts and I printed out the same heart in three different sizes and this is what I'll use as a template for my hearts. Here is the heat and bond out of the package. This side that's underneath is the adhesive side and this top side is the paper backing. On the paper side, I draw out my hearts using the templates that I made. I traced five small hearts, five medium hearts, and four large hearts. Then I started cutting out the hearts. At first I was cutting each heart individually and then I realized that was not an efficient use of my time. I'll show you why later. So I cut out the hearts in these larger blocks instead. The back of the dress has this sash attached and I think I'm only going to use this part of the dress to make the hearts because I wanna save as much fabric as I can for a future upcycle. I did this whole section and then realized that I didn't hit record so I apologize but I simply placed all the heat and bond hearts onto the wrong side of the velvet with the adhesive side down and pressed with my iron. The heat from the iron activates the adhesive. As you can see here, the hearts are now adhered to the fabric. Then I cut out all of the individual hearts. This is why I switched to cutting the hearts out in blocks earlier. This avoids having to cut each individual heart out twice. Look at all these pretty hearts. Once you cut out your hearts, you'll have something that looks like this. Then I'm just going to peel the paper off. And that's what the back looks like. And you don't have to worry about being careful with it right now. As you can tell, it's not sticky. It only gets sticky when it's heat activated. I'm starting with the front of the sweater. I want the placements of the heart to look random, but I do have to strategically place them to make sure that they are covering the little holes all over the sweater. I mapped out my hearts on the sweater and then adjusted the placement until I was happy with how it was looking. Then, I used some pins to hold the hearts in place. Moving on to the back of the sweater. There were significantly more holes in the back I had to hide, so again, I strategically randomly mapped out my hearts and then pinned them in place. I'm taking the sweater over to my iron and I'm going to start with the front of the sweater. I'm just placing a towel in between the layers of the sweater to create a barrier that will prevent the heat from activating the adhesive on the hearts that are on the back of the sweater while I press the front. I take my time ironing each individual heart and then move on to the back until all the hearts were ironed on. Here are all the hearts ironed on and I think it looks so freaking cute. I ended up having to cut two more hearts because I noticed a hole on the sleeve. As you can see here, the hearts are actually adhering to the sweater pretty well. So if you wanna be done, you're done. But you know me and you know how I like to make things difficult for myself. So I'm gonna take one more additional step just to really secure the hearts in place. All I'm gonna do is sew a straight stitch along the borders of each heart with red thread just to really secure it in place. My needle is just to the left of the edge of the heart and I'm just going to sew along the edge and when you approach the curve and have to lift the presser foot to pivot the fabric, make sure your needle is always in the down position. Once you've sewn around the entire heart, it should look something like this. Repeat for all the other hearts. 
The sweater is all done, so I just want to make a coordinating skirt. So I have this denim skirt here, and all I want to do is iron on one of the hearts on the back pocket, but the skirt is a little bit big on me, so I'm just going to have to take it in a little bit first. The skirt is a little bit big around the waist and hips, so I'm just pulling the extra fabric and using a safety pin to pin the excess fabric in the waist and hips. I want to keep this tutorial short and simple, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I've seam ripped the center back seam completely open, and I've also cut off about an inch and a half from the hem of the skirt. To take the skirt in, I'm going to fold the section under and overlap it to the other side, creating a narrower skirt. I'll sew the new center back with a double stitch to mimic the stitching on the rest of the skirt. Once I did that, I hemmed the skirt by folding it over twice and sewing with a straight stitch. Then I cut off a section of the original waistband and join it with a seam to make it smaller. Now I'll sew the waistband to the skirt. I thought sewing this waistband was going to be super simple, but it ended up being so annoying because I broke not one, not two, but three heavy duty needles trying to sew this waistband. Oh my god, it took so long! Here is the double stitch that I sewed to the new center back. I also unpicked the decorative stitching on this left pocket. Then I cut out another heart, pinned it in place, and then ironed it to the pocket. As you can see here, I've seam ripped most of the pocket from the skirt so that I can stitch the heart onto the pocket. If I left the pocket on, I would have to sew the heart onto both the pocket and skirt layers and the pocket would no longer be functional. But once the pocket is sewn back on, it should look something like this. Here is my Valentine's Day look. I love that it's so cozy and casual. It's a perfect stay-at-home outfit. I think the heart detail on the pocket really ties the whole look together without being too much. This DIY was so simple and I'm so happy with how this turned out. But wait, you didn't think I would forget Daisy, did you? What kind of dog mom would I be if I didn't make Daisy a matching outfit? For Daisy's dress, I'll be using these thrifted corduroy pants that I got for $1. I wanted something that had a similar look and color to the sweater, but with more structure, so these pants were perfect. You guys have seen me make so many dresses for Daisy now, so you know the drill. Here are the pieces I cut out from the pants, and here is what they look like sewn together. I didn't want her to get too jealous, so I made sure she also had hearts in three sizes. Then I mapped them out, and when I was happy with how everything was looking, I went ahead and ironed, and then sewed them in place. Here is what Daisy looks like in her Valentine's Day look. Give us a twirl, work the runway, and another twirl! I know this is so extra, but I can't get over how stinking cute she looks in this dress. It's definitely one of my favorites. If you want to see more photos of Daisy and I in our Valentine's Day matching outfits, make sure you follow me on Instagram at LittleToe and on TikTok at DotLittleToe. Please let me know if you tried this tutorial, and if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so, so much for watching.